Hey there, everyone. I'm Jennifer Lewis Hall. We're back with BETJ's My Two Cents and a very special guest. Salai Abrams is here and who is the author of No More Drama. It's so great to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I love being able to talk with you today because there's so much about your book that I think people can really get help with or at least begin to transform their lives in some way. But I find it interesting because even before we get into the subject matter, you yourself are now with Men's Fitness as yes. a relationship expert, mm -hmm. but you've done a lot of things. Fashion model, um, you're a writer and author. Why mental health and what do you bring to the table in terms of the mental health component? Well, I have a lot of experience with not being well. Um, I spent the majority of my life battling a mental, mental illness which was undiagnosed. So it wasn't until I was able to face the truth of that, accept it and take action that I was able to make a transformation in my life. Tell me more about your personal story because I know even reading through the book and talking to you, you're talking about suicide. You're talking about dealing with sexual assault. Very, very serious topics. Mm -hmm. But a lot of women and men out there, I think, are in the same place. Tell me about your life. I had done a very good job creating this facade, the persona, as I refer to it in my book. And nobody would know by looking at me because of the fact that I worked in entertainment, because I was yes. a model, because I looked healthy, that I was really battling a very serious illness. So my experience was growing up, I remember being 13 years old and crying for hours wow. and hours and hours at a time, locked in my bedroom, and my parents never said, what's wrong? And then, you know, the first suicide attempt as a teen, the running mm. away, the alcohol the alcoholism, yes. um, domestic violence. Why did I keep getting into these situations? And it was really um, a surprise to me around the age of 28, I, I was in the bookstore and I read this, uh, the cover of one of these books and it was talking about a disorder called borderline personality disorder. And I looked at it and I said, oh, I can't be sick. I can't have a problem. And I just buried it and continued to suffer, continued to live in pain. When did you know, though, that you had really turned a corner, not in terms of being well or getting help, but when it was at its lowest point? Because you talk about being 13 mm -hmm. and recognizing that those are the teen years. I think people expect that there's going to be pain and disappointment and you're going to lock yourself in a room. Some of those things, that's what some teens do. Mm -hmm. But when it becomes too dark, when did you know there was a real problem in your life? I knew there was a problem as a teenager. Um, a lot of my friends had problems with drugs and alcohol, but I was always the kid that would black out and wake up the next day in someone's house that I didn't remember. And I knew that my behavior was extreme, but it took until about three years ago, I went through a breakup. It was just as basic as that. I had gone through much more serious issues in my right. life, but this breakup floored me. I got in bed, didn't get out for three months. And that's when you knew you needed help. Absolutely. When you're reaching out for help, a lot of times you said people can look great on the outside but be suffering and locked really mentally inside. Mm -hmm. Where do you feel you can help people? You're so passionate about this book. You've got nine steps mm -hmm. really almost to helping them get, I guess, really a, a sense of freedom in terms of a breakthrough. Right. Tell me about that. Well, one of the reasons why I shared my story was as a way to break through the shame and the right. alienation that so many of us feel just based upon going through our life issues. You know, society mm. tells you, you know, fake it till you make it. But what I found was that faking it just kept me sick. There are no accidents in life. Everything that we go through is an opportunity for growth. That's my fervent belief. And everything that's happened in our lives, whether it's positive or negative, has occurred to help us grow and evolve into a more loving and conscious person. Well, I think that that's a wonderful place to end this interview, but we're gonna hear more from you when we come right back. You're watching BETJ's My Two Cents.